What's up guys? Welcome to Legal Alien Racing. I remember a few years ago when I was buying my very first cart, I went online and found a used cart that I thought I wanted to buy. Went out to this guy's house, looked at the cart. I didn't really know what to look for given that I was new to the sport. So in today's video, we're gonna get with Mike Jones here at Dallas Karting Complex. He's gonna give us some tips on things you can look for when you're buying a used go-kart. Hi guys, Mike Jones here with Dallas Karting Complex. Uh, today I just wanna go over a little bit on how to, what to check on the cart when, before you buy it, just to make sure that you're not buying a total piece of crap or something that uh, needs more work than maybe what you're really ready, ready to uh, put into it. So when you're going to check out the cart, uh, just look for things like the steering shaft, for example, just to make sure that it is in fact straight and true. Uh, the steering shaft connects to the tie rods, which connect to the stub axles. They're also known as spindles. And you just want to make sure that everything moves freely, that it doesn't seem like it's in a bind when you get one hard to the right or hard to the left. And uh, yeah, just that, that's one of the key factors in making sure that the chassis hasn't been hit super hard in some degree. It's pretty crucial that it is up on the stand or up in the air off the ground whenever you're checking that. Uh, when it's on the ground, just the friction from the tires to the, to the, to the surface of the ground will uh, kind of prohibit that. Secondly, you want to just kind of do an overall inspection, look over the cart, um, make sure that it doesn't look like there's different colored parts or different things that may not belong in the cart, like from an accident, uh, where people have gone back with different parts um, to repair the thing. Uh, the main thing that people will change out is for, from an accident is the, is the axle. And uh, that's pretty, pretty common if an axle does get bent, it happens in racing and therefore you're just gonna there again with the cart being up on the stand you're just gonna kind of freely roll it and make sure that it looks like the tires aren't wobbling or the jack, you know, axle's not bent um, and make sure that it, it, it rolls freely so here we have the chassis uh, up on its end uh, just showing the bottom side of it one of the key things to look for is just visual damage so you're gonna see some flat spots like this uh, it's pretty standard really in a, in a used cart application but you just want to make sure that it's not too bad and what I mean by too bad would mean a, a, you know the whole the whole underside of the flat of the of the chassis bar being flat spotted um, th this has some damage I've seen a lot worse uh, you're gonna see scrapes and things like that on the bottom of the floor pan or even the bottom of the seat that's pretty typical for uh, any asphalt sprint chassis the most common places where it's going to be ground down on regarding the chassis is either going to be in the, on the front tube and uh, in, the, in the center waste section right along here, maybe underneath the gas tank. So uh, uh, some flat spots, I guess, are okay, you know, to some degree. You just want to make sure that nothing's flat spotted too much or not even ground through the tube all the way. I've seen, seen where it's even ground so much that the chassis is just plumb worn out, not even worth trying to, trying to repair. There's ways to prohibit, you know, to prohibit that, and we put on chassis protectors. We typically put on chassis protectors on all the new carts just so they stay in good shape, but a lot of people uh, don't bother with that. Something else to keep in, into consideration whenever you're looking at these, just visually inspect the welds. Go, go over each one of the welds and make sure that it doesn't look like somebody has came in and re-welded you know, for their own repair. Make sure that it does look like a, 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 a factory or a, a you know, factory top weld from when it was originally built. A lot of guys will go to great extents to try to hide that uh, with uh, some cover up paint or things like that. Some guys really don't know how to weld even though you'll, you know, you'll find those welds rather easy. So um, just take your time, go over the cart, again checking for all the, the welds, uh, maybe any cover up paint, something like that, uh, just so you understand what, you're, what you might buy from the potential seller. One of the main things also is when you're going over the chassis is just to make sure that there's, there's no apparent cracks or uh, breaks or anything in the chassis. A lot of the times when guys are assembling the chassis, we have to bend these seat stays out to accommodate a larger seat. And right on the inside of this tube of the, of the seat stay, they, they'll actually crack. And uh, you'll, you'll see where people will go back and try to re-weld it. Uh, just to keep it from cracking some more and that's not a horrible thing but if you can get a, a chassis that doesn't have uh, flaws like that it is in fact better 
If you find a chassis that does have cracks and has re-welds on it, is that something that you would just stay away from? Or is it a deal where, you know, for the right price, you know, it's not that big a deal? That's that's kind of the way I would look at it. If you're, depends on what you're buying the chassis for. Is it just for weekend driving or is it something that you're really looking in to get into some competition racing? Um, uh, and just take that into consideration. You know, some of the small cracks really aren't that big of a deal. But if you're looking uh, to go to go run uh, some larger events, of course you want something that's going to be in much better shape than that. All right. So one of the other things to look for is the this piece that the stub axle is bolted into is called the yoke, or some people call it the C channel. What not doesn't really matter what you call it. But the the yoke is the piece that connects onto the tube. And then there's a kingpin that goes all the way through the yoke and, and holds the stub axle in place. As you can see, this piece is very square from top to bottom. Uh, nothing awkward or odd about that at all. But on the other side, we have a little bit of damage. And this is, in fact, you can see a little bit of curvature here in the yoke. Uh, it did, in fact, take some impact on this side, causing some deep def uh, deformity in the, in the yoke itself. That doesn't always mean that it's horrible, but if I had my options to pick uh, a different card over one that has this damage, I probably wouldn't pick this one. It's just too hard to fix. And once they get hit like this and they deform like that, they really never do go back uh, to being correct again. Again, it kind of just goes down to what are your uh, what are your options here in the cart, you know, in, in the sport of karting? Are are you getting into this because uh, if you're just looking to be a weekend warrior out at your local track or you really want something for, for good competition. Uh, but this, this chassis really needs to be replaced because it has so much damage on it. And a um, uh, set of tubes or the frame can be replaced typically for somewhere around twelve to $1,400 depending on the, the, the brand of chassis. One of the services that we offer here at Dallas Karting Complex is uh, chassis straightening or chassis truring or just so we can go over the chassis to make sure that nothing's really bent or out of uh, out of whack. So uh, the chassis table is in fact completely flat. Uh, here we have an, indi an indicator where it shows the height of the of the chassis on this part. You can see where I've just placed the, the top right up on top of the, the yoke there. And then we just lock everything down and then move it over to the opposite side. And here you see it. The chassis is in fact bent so it looks like we have about um, it's about three millimeter i guess is what i would just estimate difference from the right side to the left side that means this right side is about three three millimeters lower than the other side now we can typically always fix that that's not that's not hard these chassis are pretty springy so uh just with a little uh a little work we can get the chassis back to the square again also, uh, one thing to keep in mind is uh, some people will tell you, for, uh, you might be calling them asking about uh, the particular chassis they have for sale. One cart is really not any better than the next one. Um, they're all pretty much built the same uh, from in regards to a European type chassis. Uh, it's all made of 4130 chromoly. And uh, for, for a guy that might be telling you, yeah, my cart is better than the other, they're pretty much almost the same. It's one, one's going to have different color paint on it. The, the spindles and the pieces, the accessory pieces of the cart might look a little different than the next one, but that doesn't necessarily mean that one is really, in fact, better than the other. Uh, something uh, else to consider is the data logger, otherwise known as a Micron 5. That's the latest that we use. Uh, some, uh, you'll see they have a, a 2T right next to the Micron 5. That stands for two temperature. The two temperature can, can be uh, anything from a head temperature to a water, inline water temperature sensor or uh, even an EGT that goes into the pipe for exhaust gas temperature probe. The Micron 5 or any data logger is, is designed to record data and it'll work with any engine application. Uh, typically you can even go in if, uh, if a guy is telling you that the, the engine only has so many hours on it, it actually has a uh, hour meter and he can go in and show you uh, in fact how many hours are on the on the ran engine so one of the things just to be aware of keep in mind is you know what is your operating expense for the class that you're looking to run 
Um, if you're looking to go into full-on shifter car racing, uh, probably is going to be about the most expensive for operating reason. Uh, with just more horsepower means it's going to cost more. You're going to go through more pads, obviously more fuel. So just understand that there are some costs involved in that whenever you're, whenever you're just driving or racing. And um, if you go and look at a cart that looks like the tires are completely wore out, don't worry about it. We replace the tires all the time. It's just a, a wear item and you should realize that that is something to, uh, that you're, you're gonna commonly be replacing. Uh, like I said, with brakes and, and fuel also, it's just something that goes along with it. One of the terms uh, that we call a, a, a rolling chassis is like a roller. And what that means is uh, pretty much a complete chassis without the engine. So sometimes whenever you'll see in classified sections, people selling their stuff, they might refer to it as a roller. And that means pretty much everything except an engine. All right, I hope that information is useful to you. Again, big thanks to Dallas Karting Complex for taking the time to give us some tips on things to look for when buying a used cart. If you've got some other ideas on things that people can uh, also look for, go ahead and put them in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.